What's up guys, my name is Justin Graziano and I'm a product photographer. And on this channel, I do behind the scene breakdowns and tutorials. And in today's video, I thought we could do some spicy edits. So if you guys are like me, you probably have had the thought of trying to light a product on fire, but maybe it's not the safest thing and once your product's lit on fire, maybe it won't hold up as well. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to pull this off without actually having to light your product on fire, but first, we're gonna need to shoot something to edit. So here's some Mike's Hot Honey, and for today's video, we're gonna keep things pretty simple. So for this setup, I took a C-stand so that we had something to set my product on top, and then from there, I took some gaff tape and I rolled it up just to hold my product in place. Try to keep things pretty simple with a three light setup with one key light and two backlights. And just to break down the photos that I took for this, I took four different exposures, one main exposure, one with the bounce board, one with the light behind my product so that we get the glow and the color of the honey, and one with me holding up the bottle so that we can see the bottom of the container so that we can comp that in post. So now that we have all our photos taken, we can go ahead and jump into the edit. So now that we have all our photos in place, we can start getting into this edit. And for those of you guys that wanna follow along, I went ahead and dropped a link down below to the raw files. But for some of the elements during this edit, you're gonna to need to go ahead and source those yourself. But don't worry, I'm gonna let you know exactly where to find them when we get to that part. So if you guys decided to follow along during this edit, the first thing you need to do is to upload all your files to Lightroom. This is where I like to do all my color adjustments and adjust any of the highlights and shadows. So once I've done that to my main image, what I like to do is to copy and paste those settings onto all the other images in my set so that they all look the same. And the reason I like to do this manually versus using the sync function is because I like to have full control over my images and sometimes I like to make a few tweaks along the way. Now that we're done making all of our lighting adjustments in Lightroom, we can go ahead and jump over into Photoshop where we can really start to have some fun with this edit. So the first thing I wanna do with this one is to start by cutting out the bottle. And I'm going to do that by using the pen tool, which is pretty easy once you learn it. So once you've finished tracing out your bottle, what you're gonna go ahead and do is right click, go to make selection, and then add a layer mask. And then real quick, I'm going to rearrange my layers by placing this one on the bottom. And then we can go ahead and turn off the rest of our layers until we need them. So the next layer that I'm going to add in is going to be for the label, which is a photo that I took using the bounce card. What this did for us in this case is it's allowing us to bring back more of the details so that we can see the golden metallic elements in the label a lot easier. And pretty much we're gonna do the same exact thing that we did for the bottle, but this time only cutting out the label. So this is looking pretty good, but we're gonna add in a black background in just to make this file a little bit easier to work with. And an easy way to do this is by going down to the adjustment layer section and selecting solid color. Basically what this does, it will fill in your entire background with one color. And if you decide to adjust your crop, it will automatically fill your background with that color. So all we need to do is to select black and drop this down to the very bottom. Once that's done, we can really start to bring some life to this bottle by adding that back load to the bottle with this layer right here. This is pretty simple. We just wanna make sure that that layer is underneath our label layer and then we could just add a layer mask, invert it, and paint back all the details that we want. And if you need to go back and touch up anything, you could do that by using white to reveal more of the layer or using black to erase anything that you didn't want. And now we're getting super close to adding in all those fire elements. The last thing we need to do is to add in the bottom of the bottle back in. And we're gonna do that with, if you haven't guessed it, another layer mask. So I'm gonna drag a rectangle marquee around the bottom half and add a layer mask. And then I'm going to apply it. And then I'm gonna change my blend mode to different so that we can align the bottom half a little bit more easily. Once you feel like you've got it into a comfortable spot, we can hit enter and then change our blend mode back to normal. Then we're gonna go in here again with the pen tool so that we can get a better look at what we're working with. So everything is traced out and all we need to do is to add our layer mask. And now that that layer mask is added, I'm gonna make a few more tweaks. So everything's looking pretty good. Now we can grab our brush tool by hitting B. 
and using a soft brush of black to blend in the bottom half of her bottle from the top to the bottom, making sure that things look natural. So now that we have a floating bottle, I just wanna go back in and touch up a few things. So the first thing I like to do in a case like this is I like to group all my layers and duplicate it. Then I'll merge those layers by hitting Command or Control plus E. Then from there, what I'll do is I'll get rid of anything in the bottle that I don't want using the patch tool. And I'll just continue to do this until my bottle looks nice and clean. And it's time to get into the nitty gritty of this edit, which is adding in all that fire. But first, we're gonna need to download some fire assets in order to do that and I'm gonna be using Element and Bottles for this one. If you guys aren't subscribers to Element and Bottles already, you can go down to the link in my description below to get a seven day free trial where you can download all the same assets that I'm gonna be using. And if you guys haven't checked out Element and Bottles yet, it's an amazing resource to have if you're a content creator. You can download from thousands of different assets, whether it's stock images of fire or puppies playing in a park. So I highly recommend signing up for Element and Bottles so you can get access to all these awesome assets. So here's what I downloaded for this edit. And for each of these images, I'm gonna put a small description of what I searched to find each of these images so that you guys can find them yourselves and use them to follow along during this edit. So let's start by adding in some fire. I really love the shape of this one and I think it's gonna wrap around the bottom half of the bottle pretty nicely. So once you've placed your image into Photoshop, you can go ahead and change your blend mode to screen and start to tweak your fire to wrap around the bottle. And if you wanna brighten up some of the flames that are covering the actual bottle, you can do this simply by adding another layer underneath your flame layer, and then just painting in some black to bring back those details. And now that this first flame is looking pretty decent, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another flame behind the honey bottle. So I'm gonna drag in my next image and drag it beneath the bottle layer, and then adjust it to exactly where I want it. And for this one, you can see some red tint coming in around the bottom half of the flame. So I'm just gonna add a layer mask in so that we can clean that up. And to bring a little bit more atmosphere to this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in some flying embers around the bottle, and I'm gonna use this asset right here to do that. And if you wanna even this image out a little bit and get rid of some of those red tones, all you need to do is to add a levels adjustment layer and bump up the blacks a little bit until it looks exactly where you want it. And now I just wanna add in a few more flying embers on top of the bottle, so I'm gonna be using this blurred out image of a fire to do that. So all we need to do here is to add another layer mask, invert it, and then brush back all the embers that we want. So now that I have my fire in place, I just wanna go back in and make a few more adjustments to the bottle. I'm gonna do that by adding a brightness and contrast adjustment layer and clipping it to my bottle. And then I'm just gonna darken things up a little bit. And then from there, I'm gonna use a soft brush just to brighten things up back in the center. And what I'm looking to do here is just to darken up those edges a little bit. So we're pretty much done with the edit at this point. The last thing I wanna do is to add a slight orange glow to the edge of the bottle, which would be reflecting off of the fire. So we could do that by clipping a hue and saturation adjustment layer to our bottle, and then select colorize, and then pick out a nice warm orange. So once we picked out our color, all we need to do is to invert that layer mask and gently paint in some highlights along the edge of the bottle, making sure not to affect the label too much. And once we're done with that, we should have our final image, which looks like this. All right guys, so that's gonna wrap it up for me on this one. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned something new. And if you guys decided to follow along during this edit, I would love to check those out. So please feel free to message me on Instagram. And as always, if you guys have any questions about this edit, please feel free to ask me down in the comments below. And if you guys actually wanna see me light a product on fire, maybe we'll do that. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.